The Senate is set to vote on gun control bills for this coming Monday, and we want to get the perspective from someone on Capitol Hill. So earlier today, I spoke with Nita Lowy. She's a Democratic congresswoman from New York's 17th District. Congressman, it's always good to see you. We just heard um, from Nicole Hockley, the mother um, of one of many victims of uh, mass shootings in this country, her six-year-old son, obviously, one of the first graders, um, no longer with us after Sandy Hook. Should we look at what happened after that marathon filibuster that finally a glimmer of hope here, we're going to actually get a vote next week in the Senate? Or should we say, wait a minute, this is watered down. Um, it's no guarantee that even that will pass. We should just be as frustrated as we were before Orlando and all these other shootings, nothing changes. How do, how do you look at what's happened this week? First of all, it was such a horror. And after the shock, my heart just went out to those parents and relatives of the 49 who were killed. How senseless, how senseless. After Newtown, we said never again. Uh, San Bernardino, we said never again. This is the United States of America. And how young people, whether they're LGBT or whether they are not, they're going out for an evening and they s no one ever thought that they wouldn't come home. So I just get furious. I get angry. I really admire Senator Murphy for the, I think it was 15 to 17 hours that he was talking about it on the floor. But we've talked a lot. In my appropriations committee, I have introduced and lost a vote five times on no buy, no fly. Amazing, Richard. If you are on a terrorist watch list, you can still go out and buy a gun. No buy, no fly should be the law of the land. We've had this on the floor of the house more than 13 times. It is shocking to me. I even have one of my colleagues yeah. say that the answer to this horror in Orlando was conceal and carry. I looked at him, conceal and carry? Uh, if everyone had weapons in the dark, they'd be shooting each other. I mean, this is no answer. And I've talked to many people in law enforcement who say the period of background checks, three days is not enough. They sometimes need seven days. They need nine days. So we have a lot of work to do. And I would hope that the backbone of some of my colleagues could be strengthened and say enough is enough. Mm -hmm. um, another friend of this program, your colleague um, Jim Himes uh, from Connecticut, he walked out during a moment of silence because he said it's in effect just hypocrisy and it's a fraud. We have moments of silence but we don't do anything about it and we enable some of this stuff. Was he right or did he go too far? Look, he's right. People who stayed as I did to offer respect to those families were right. Whether you walk out, whether you stay, the answer is doing something about it. Here's what I don't get. All politics local, I get that. And I know the power of the NRA, except we're not talking about assault weapons here. We could have a whole different conversation on that. We're talking about people labeled as dangerous to the national security that we won't let them on a plane but we'll let them buy a gun. Now 90 percent of this country says that's crazy mm -hmm. and more than 77 percent of gun owners in this country say it's crazy too. I don't really think it's that much of a political risk for a Republican who's even endorsed and supported by the NRA to stick their neck out on this one. Mm -hmm. I think there's an overestimation about the blowback they'll get. Uh, am I wrong? Yes. I am. <laughs> they'll be it's primary. A, it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. They are so afraid of a primary from, and they are on the right, and they're so afraid of a primary from the far right that they will vote against it. I see it in appropriations. I look at my colleagues reasonable people. Even a couple of Democrats vote with the Republicans when it comes to gun yep. issue. Look, I'm not doing a psychoanalysis and uh, figure out whether in their heart of hearts yeah. they think one way or the other. All I know 
<laughs> if you're mm. on a terrorist watch list, you shouldn't be able to buy ah, a gun. It's crazy. Um, it's uh, no secret here, both professionally and personally, you're very close uh, with former Secretary uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. To that end, uh, you don't even have to put your name on it. I will. I've spoken to people within the campaign. They went from being baffled by Sanders uh, during the primary to being stunned by the national polls where Trump was even as recently as two and a half weeks ago to now, well, now maybe not, you know, uh, get measurements for the drapes, very confident where things stand right now. To that end, assuming Sanders comes all the way around as we think he will and support her, is she better off getting somebody to secure the left, the progressive side, <laughs> or is she better off getting somebody in the middle? And don't tell me you haven't talked to her about this because I know how close you two are. Where, where does she go right now with the campaign? Just let Trump blow himself up or make a clear distinction? Look, I am never confident when it comes to elections. Uh, I feel Hillary Clinton certainly has the experience, she has the wisdom, she has everything that we would want to see in a president of the United States, but I'm never confident. Number one, every day Trump comes out with something outrageous. Uh, I don't even understand how he can get the support that he gets whether it's far right or moderate Republicans, uh, I, I just don't get it. It would be an embarrassment and dangerous in my judgment to the United States of America and to the world. With regard to the burn, it always shocked me from the beginning that a 74-year-old grumpy old man uh, <laughs> could get this following. Sometimes I think these youngsters thought they were going to Woodstock and, <laughs> and having a party. But to the extent that he energized those young people, I do hope that Senator Sanders will at some point when he's comfortable before the convention urge them to register and vote Democrat because certainly all the things he's talking about, most Democrats support. Bernie's not on, reportedly, the uh, short list that's getting vetted right now for beat. Uh, if, and I'm sure she has, if she asks you who'd be a good running mate, what would be the best ticket? Would you say an Elizabeth Warren type on the left or somebody like a Tim Kaine in the middle? What do you think? I have great respect. Oh, you're a good politician. You're not going to For those that. who are doing the vetting, I think Elizabeth Warren has been invaluable as an advocate. She is sharp. Uh, she's right on so many issues. I think Tim Kaine has the persona and the commitment to be a good VP. So I, I haven't made a decision yet, even if I wanted to give her advice. I've been talking to many of my colleagues because I mm. think who the vice president is is a very important decision. Especially in this election cycle. Congresswoman, as always, I so appreciate the time. A pleasure to be with you. And I'm going to back and fight. No, fl no fly, no buy. We've you know, got to get this done. It's time now. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's even a debate to me, at least. Anyway, me we'll, too. Be, we'll be right back, everybody. Stay with us.